my center bolt was sheared this is how or all that i found left of my center bolt and two little chunks of the top here so the new one is front spring bolt from uh, smith and jones and it's part number a-5345-f i'll leave a link in the description below for smith and jones otherwise it needs to be a grade 8 bolt from what i understand with a square head so let's just see if i can get that to fit down in there like that and it looks like it's way too long which is probably a good thing I have a large C clamp that I'm going to put over this here in order to squeeze it together inch on the top and a nine sixteenths on the bottom. I'm going to tighten it up, making sure that the top is exactly square with the rest of it. I'm going to put the spring clips on and the spring clips I got from Smith & Jones part A-5330 one has a square headed nut on the one end and the other has a hex head on the other so I'm just going to pull that out and then coming over here one of your leaf springs will have the, the hole with a dimple in it and that pin goes down in the dimple just like that right there and then run <clears throat> this through it and put the bolt or put the nut on. Okay, so now after putting that pin down in the hole here, I've tightened up uh, both, uh, held one and tightened up the other, to, and then it pinches it on here and holds it up on here like I did there. So I got this bolt good and tight. Now it seems to be holding just fine. I'm leaving this center bolt good and tight and I'm going to tighten this one up here. Be ready to paint, Lord will. Okay, now I've got the spring clips tight and the center bolt tight. I'm going to slowly loosen this C clamp here. And thankfully, it looks like everything has managed to stay clipped together. There's the front and there's the next. Back. I'm going to clamp this in the vise before we paint it and I'm going to cut off this. Uh, extra bolt helpful tip when you go to hacksaw this bolt off right here you'll want to make sure you take a ball peen hammer and peen this edge over real good that way it doesn't want to come off okay so i'm just using some rust oleum gloss black here and i'm gonna lay it to it now there's the first coat Flash. Mark Moran on our Mafka group has informed me that the spring clips that I'm using are modern and they're not exactly made right. So I just went back and found my original ones that I took off and I think I'll try to buff them up. And I don't know if you can see it on here, but um, the, they're much there's a lot of difference in the uh, thickness here so you can see that this bolt right here doesn't come up underneath of the leaf and it looks like from this point of view here that this one will so mm -hmm. i think i'm going to go take these antiquated ones that look like they've come off the titanic and give them a good clean plan i was missing my top leaf and after further discussion on our mafka group it was determined that it would be best for me to have the proper thickness and so i got from steve becker a number three leaf because my number one leaf is the one that's hard to come by because it's the first to get broke and it's the first to get lost so i got this one from steve becker uh out in um Colorado so I'm gonna try to grind 
or cut this one off, grind it down, and replace my first one with an original leaf spring. Okay, so after grinding it down and cutting it off, trying to put a little bevel on this here and going back and beveling the underside here, I think we're about ready to try to fit it all back together onto the top of the leaf spring. So now I've got it pretty well like I want it with the shape. So I'm gonna do the same thing again with the osvo and then the black graphite and then the paint. Okay, so two coats later, now I'm ready to insert that onto the top. So I've gotta take this spring apart and then insert it back in and then tighten it all back down. Okay, so now we've got it all loose. Pull the center bolt out. Okay, so now I've got it um, put back into place. So I've got all 10 leaf springs. So I'm gonna clamp it down and give it a good paint job. Okay, so back under the front here, I have um, took and chased the threads on these bolts here, cause they were really tough. And all of this underneath here was just coated with rust because of the overflowing of the radiator over the last 94 years. So I scraped it really good with a wire brush, and then I coated it really good with the Osfo to help neutralize that rust. So I'm gonna let it coat and uh, dry overnight. Well, I made an executive decision, and instead of putting rubber down here, I'm gonna use anti-friction tape that I get from Ace Hardware. I'm just gonna cut it off in little strips and go from here to here and from here to here. The little glue is already sticky down here to help it stick. That way it's not beefing it up too thick and I make sure I have enough of this nut here to feel it go into that notch up in the cross member. So that's what I was suggested to from Mark Moran and I happen to agree with that. I think it's a good plan. Okay, now we're gonna coat the top of this welt with some grease here. Okay, so now I've let the axle all the way down to the ground, um, almost, on the floor jack. So that way the wheels aren't touching the ground. So I've got it all the way down right now. About to clamp it down. Okay, so underneath of here, I'm going to put this plate back on with the hole facing the nut here. And line up those four bolts there so that wasn't easy but what I did was I pushed up with one hand the plate up into there and I just got barely the four nuts started while pushing up like bench pressing it underneath the car if you have a lift it'd be a piece of cake but um, now I've got to be able to slide this leaf and make sure that the top bolt fits into that slot here in the cross member. So I'll do that next and then go ahead and start tightening these down. Okay, so now that I've got them all um, tightened down real good, I just went ahead and added cotter pins to each of these and gonna bend these over. Okay, I've got new spring shackles here. I've got these from Davin Smith at Smith & Jones down in Columbia, South Carolina. I can leave a link in the description below for that. So, I'm going to start with the end that's the most convenient to get it in and it looks like this one is so I try to fit them all and um, these bushings are still good I've replaced those so that's the closest uh, to be able to make fit so I'm gonna try to jack up the, um, the axle here enough to get to worry both of those in here one side at a time start before I put that in I'm gonna grease put the little grease on both of those because that'll be the last time it'll get grease by my fingers. Right, so taking a rubber mallet, and I've been able to hammer that in to some degree. It's not all the way in, but enough to get um, the new the new castle nuts on the back here. So I'm gonna at least get those started and then see if I can go worry the other side in right there. Like that. At least we're in the groove, so to speak. So 
So now with the jack all the way down, putting a wooden block under this side that's already in, putting two under this one, now I'm gonna apply pressure to it. Jack it up a little bit and see if I can spread that thing out just enough to get the other side spring it all in. So as I jack down on this floor jack here, I don't know if you can see it, but this thing has been spreading out more. It may be giving me a fine chance to get this spring shackle in. Look at that. Hallelujah. So now I need to add what's called a crossbar, and I got that out of the kit from Smith & Jones A-5304OR front spring shackles. Okay, so here's the crossbar right there. Then got the two nuts here. One and two. The same for the other side. Putting the crossbar on. So now that I've got the crossbar on here. You can see there's a little gap between here and here. And as I tighten this one back here, it's pulling the leaf into alignment and allowing this one to go in tighter. So all I need to do is tighten these tight enough to get the cotter key through, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, so that's deep enough to get the cotter keys in. We're ready to turn those over and go to the other side. So now let's jack it up and put the tires on, Lord willing. Also, I added two knock-in grease fittings here, and I basically drove them in or pressed them in with this tool here that I got from Smith & Jones in Columbia, South Carolina. I'll leave a link in the description below for them. So it just fits on over that and drives over it without damaging the outer portion of that. So in summary of their leaf spring video, um, I should have just bought a set of reproduction leaf springs, I think, instead of trying to rebuild mine. Number one, I'm too cheap to try to buy something brand new. Number two, I like using the original parts when I can, and I found out that mine probably isn't the original leaf springs for this car. So in retrospect, I think I will probably end up going back and replacing the leaf springs with a brand new set because even after re-arching these, according to Les Andrews, it just wasn't enough to make any difference as far as the springiness is concerned. The good news is I found out that my center bolt of my leaf spring was broken and sheared for probably the last 50 plus years. And thus, because of that, the leaves had shifted and uh, I was getting a very rough ride and didn't know any better because I've never owned a Model A before. So now, after replacing all that, it actually, I can tell just around the yard here, rides much, much smoother. I can tell a distinct difference already. So this was a good project for me. I would especially like to thank everyone on the Masca Facebook page who helped me uh, walk me through this whole process. If it wasn't for you guys, I couldn't have done it. And if I start naming names, I'll leave about half of you out without thinking. So if you helped me, you know who you are and you're very much appreciated thank you so if you like this type of content please consider subscribing i'm doing the best i can to put out videos that are quality content that at least gives uh, a visual on some of these things that a lot of videos don't have and a lot of the videos aren't out yet so this is like a preliminary for other people to improve on as the years go by thanks for watching y'all